Hello and welcome to a small update video for Open Computers introducing a new feature. That new feature being the 3D printer. So what you see here are mostly 3D printed blocks. So in this screen there are only, well, except for the stand standstone, only two blocks that are not printed. That being these stairs and this block of diamond, everything else is printed. So these stairs are all printed and this block of diamond is also printed. And these slabs are printed and this pot thingy here is printed, etc, etc. So this block is the 3D printer. You connect it via cables. You can also connect it from the sides, not from the top, but yeah. And this is what's used to print the blocks. So if we open this up, we see the GUI and we see the two input slots and the output slot. And these input slots take two resources, the one being this one. This is basically the raw matter that is used to print the blocks. It's crafted like this. And the other one, the lower one, is for the ink, which is used to color the blocks, basically. Oh, well, that's the explanation anyway which is crafted using this and filled up using some dyes. Uh, when I put it in, it fills up the uh, internal buffer of ink and spits out the empty cartridge. If I put in uh, some of this uh, raw material, we'll see the uh, bar here going up a bit. And that's used to print the shapes. Um, the way the consumption is computed is that the uh, raw matter uh, consumed is based on the volume of the printed shapes and the ink is based on the surface area of the printed shapes. So what we now see is that nothing is happening, which is because we have not yet defined a model to be printed. For this we use a computer. Um, the printer is basically a simple component like any other component, um, but to make working with it a little easier there's a small program um, which I also uploaded to OPPM, which is called Print3D. So um, to install it, you would basically just run OPPM install Print3D. And this is used to print uh, model descriptors. Uh, these are of, a, are of a custom format. So I made a few ones to test and the extension is just optional. It's just something I used to uh, make it clear to me which are models and which are not. And if we have a look at one of these, let's start with the most simple one, the block. We'll see this is basically a Lua table. So um, this is, it's in the table format and we have some entries. And the top level entries are the label. There are a few more, which we'll get into later. And the shapes. The shapes is a list of uh, lists. So let's make this a bit more readable. And each entry contains uh, six numbers, which are the lower and the upper coordinates of the corners of the box that this shape represents, and the texture used to render this box. Uh, so this will render a full-sized block with the texture of a diamond block and use the label block of diamond. Um, the label is optional, so if you do not specify this, it, it will just uh, say 3D print. Um, so if we send this to the printer, we'll, so it tells us it worked, and we'll see there's also a preview of the block being printed. And if we open the GUI, we'll see that it now actually consumes the resources and spits out the printed blocks. And if I take this out and place it somewhere in the world, we'll see that it looks just like it should. So that's a very simple example. Let's do something a little more interesting. Um, let's print some stairs. Uh, print 3D. Again, we'll see there's the preview. And if we, well, it uses a little less resources because it's smaller, so it could print a single one, which is enough for us right now. And we can print, uh, place those somewhere in the world. And they are also rotated based on which way you're facing when you place them. Um, they do not flip upside down like stairs would, but you can print them that way if you want to. 
And what we also notice now is that the collision model for these blocks is based on the actual shapes used in the model. So these work like actual stairs. I can walk up those. And that works like you'd expect it to. Um, what I can also demonstrate right now is that the surfaces of these uh, act as solid surfaces where there's a solid shape. So for example, in this printed diamond block, I can place a lever on it. For the stairs, I can place the lever underneath because if you look at the um, the outlines of the selection, you'll see that the lower slab is the solid one. I cannot place this on the back because there is a split between the two shapes. So if you want to have um, a print where you can place uh, torches or levers on it, you have to make sure that on that face there's a solid area. All right. Um, so that's for the rotation and collision model of the stairs. Next up we can have a look at the custom functionality which involves states. So if I have a look at this model, you can see there are two entries, but one of them has another optional um, parameter which is the state parameter. And this is set to true. By default, it's false, so the default state is inactive. And this shape, so this parameter tells the printer that this shape should be used for the active state of the model. So if I were to print this, again, we'll see the preview in here and put some materials in. Let's see if this is enough, yes. We'll now see we have a printed trapdoor essentially, so which is this one, and this allows us to right-click it to flip its state. So it pretty much behaves like a trapdoor. It also reacts to redstone, and well, that's it for multiple states. So each state can have up to sixteen shapes in it. Uh, this is configurable in the config, of course, but that's the default anyway. And this way you can basically print uh, trapdoors or doors or whatever, um, but that's not all. So if we have a look at this model, you'll see there are some more parameters here on top level. Uh, this one means that the model should emit a redstone signal while it's in the alternate state. And this one tells it that it should automatically revert to its uh, inactive state after some time. Um, if this is false, the uh, block will emit a redstone signal when it's when in its alternate state. If this is false, the uh, and this is true, the block will basically work like a lever. So um, it will stay in the alternate state and continuously continuously emit a redstone signal. So let's print um, this one. Ah. Really. Again with the preview. And let's check out this one. And we already got one. So we can now place this anywhere in the world. And if we right click it, it goes into its alternate state. And because it's in button mode, it will automatically revert to the previous state. And if I have a lamp. Put that somewhere. All right, let's just use this one. You'll see it also emits a redstone signal, so the lamp turns on while it's in its active state. So that's pretty much it regarding the uh, 3D printer. Uh, some things may change until release, but for the most part, this should be relatively final. One final remark, however, um, what you did notice probably when we looked at the uh, model files, the textures were specified as strings. Um, these names you can get using the new tool, which is the texture picker, which is crafted using an analyzer and a few dies. And if you use that to click on a block, it will tell you what texture is used on that side of the block. So can use that to figure out uh, which textures to use for your models when you print them. 
Right. So I hope you have fun printing decorative blocks and levers and doors and whatnot. And that's it for now. See you.